to another series of our popular webinar, InvestNest, titled Australian Businesses with a Progressive Customer First Approach. Now, if you're just joining us, my name is James Preston. I'm a news anchor with Calcai Media, and I will be your moderator for today. Just before we start this session, let me inform everyone that this webinar is for informational purposes only. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy, sell, or hold the stock of the company or any companies mentioned, or engage in any investment activity under discussion. At Calcine, we are neither licensed nor qualified to provide investment advice through this platform. Now, let's get started with today's webinar on Australian businesses with a progressive customer first approach. Life events are less predictable than they were in the past, and organizations that don't detect these shifts struggle to remain relevant in today's marketplace. An amazing customer experience is one of the biggest competitive advantages a company can have today. And in today's exclusive InvestNest webinar by Calcine Media, we've got two business leaders or two Australian businesses with a progressive customer first approach. That includes Mr. Peter Malone, the executive chairman of our client Skin Elements Limited, and also Mr. Peter Gwynn, the managing director of our client Hallmark Business Sales Pty Limited. It's a very warm welcome to both of you. Thanks for taking the time to get involved with our InvestNest webinar series. Let's begin with our first speaker of the day. That's Mr. Peter Malone, the executive chairman of Skin Elements Limited, who is responsible for the strategic direction of the company. And Mr. Malone has more than 30 years of experience in global financial markets. He's been instrumental in successfully raising over $100 million for technology development companies. He holds a proven track record in developing and managing tech development programs from the idea stage all the way into functioning reality. And as for the company itself, Skin Elements is an award-winning ASX-listed company committed to designing and formulating natural, organic health and wellness products for the global market. And it partners with Nature to source only the best healthy ingredients for its brand. The company has a track record of developing natural products that have received constant approval from the TGA in Australia, the USA's FDA, and other significant regulators. So with that, I now invite Peter Malone to start enlightening all of us. Peter, great to catch up with you once again, and thank you so much for being here. I'll turn it over to you. Very good, James. Yeah, thanks very much, mate. Uh, great to be here, as always. And uh, certainly, it's uh, big, big things changing with Skin Elements. It's been a, uh, a fairly long R&D program we've run for the last decade. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, a win through, a run through of that on the slides. But it's just to give you an overview, it's taken 10 years really to get the antimicrobial technology developed. Uh, initially developed for pathogens generally across the globe. And uh, with the uh, advent of COVID, of course, we pivoted the business to go for a killer result on the, uh, the COVID-19 virus as well, which was just been uh, advised by the, a the, the uh, TGA that uh, we've not only just got the full test result that's passed and kills the virus, but it's the strongest result globally uh, out of a plant-based disinfectant, which is uh, a win for both sides of town. The people like safer products are used in the home and the office, and for the people that want to definitely kill the virus at the strongest level possible. We're basically a life sciences company, biotech, and uh, that's where the company started and has been going very much down that path of developing with natural organic antimicrobial bases. Running through the sort of the history of the company, it's uh, essentially developed a range of natural organic products that use this antimicrobial base that keeps them safe from bacteria, viruses, pathogens, as we've gone through the various era of these products. And it's over a, a significant period that we've got TJ approvals on the sunscreens, the uh, pawpaw-based products, which use papaya, and now the supercover, which is a, a cleaner product in terms of ingredients, more it's just uh, antiviral base. That statement sort of says it all. We've developed human safe, plant-based antimicrobial products to combat viral infections, including COVID-19, which has been the big win 
in terms of the research program, we've been able to effectively kill the virus uh, once we spray our disinfectant, and it's a significant result globally for us. What we're now seeing, of course, is the change in the market, and the market is very much effectively in COVID. We've seen a lot of changes in the demographics of who's doing what and who's buying what, and just the, the way people are going about their purchases. And uh, it's spawned this new area called conscious consumerism, where people just don't buy, they're now buying the best or the right or the appropriate product, rather than just getting something thrust down their throat because it's been heavily advertised. And uh, this is where we come in. So the, why does people buy Supercover? Envisage Supercover is the product name. Essentially why you buy it is because it's the strongest product against the COVID viral in the disinfecting space. And secondly, it's the safest product to use in terms of human occupation in rooms, buildings, cars, boats, whatever. So this is a, a reason why people buy it. They, they buy a product now to be safe, but they also buy a product to be most effective against the virus. And this hits both buttons twice. It's the strongest product against the virus, it kills it. And it's the safest on the market for human use. The choices, there's always been choices. We've lived through choices for the last year and a half in COVID and the choices haven't been happy choices. You know, you've had these chlorides and if we know they have chlorides, the benzylconium chlorides and the like, uh, the acids are corrosive and damage cells in the body on contact. Uh, we do, uh, most of our frontline people do use hazmat gear with them, of course. Uh, we all have to have abilities to not breathe the fumes and uh, it can lead to pulmonary edemas. So it doesn't come without a significant risks and our frontline staff have been using those products up to date because they've been probably the best. And, and the funny thing is a lot of these chlorides, our product super cover is over 1000 times stronger. 1,000 times stronger, not just stronger. And we jump across to the peroxides. There have been the alternatives, the hydrogen-based peroxides. Uh, they don't treat the skin well. They do destroy skin cells. They damage the collagen, elastin fibers, cause premature aging. And again, they are known to result in tissue damage. So again, none of these products are going and coming to our use in a comfortable way. But we, up till today, had no choice. And in some ways, the, the peroxide, the hydrogen peroxides are also combustible. Uh, if they come into dry vegetation and ordinary clothing, we've seen all those things on the net and those YouTube presentations where suddenly it just ignites instantaneously. So the risks are huge where we've been. And this is why Skin Island has set out to come up with a, a groundbreaking product, as we call it, the game changer in our space. And it's just received the TJ approval to allow us to start producing and marketing the product around Australia. Um, just touching on what this score means, the TJ is, uh, reports on a scientific basis, scientific scores are log scores, logarithmic tables. The top log score used to be a log six, and then super cover came along and it's a log seven. It basically is a log reduction on the amount of viruses it kills at any one time. And if you look at the table, the log four and a log five are the normal standard disinfecting bottles you'll see around. They either have four or five nines on their score. A four, a four score, we're a thousand times stronger. Uh, or if they've got a five score, we're even a hundred times stronger. 
So that gives, gives us a bit of an understanding of what the score is. To see that in a graphical way, uh, our scientific guys have sort of put a scientific package together on how it should look. Those bottles there are the new super cover bottles getting manufactured in Melbourne at the moment. And if you look at the Petri dishes on that graphics, we're up at a log seven, clean dish. A log six, virus is on the table still. A log five, the standard disinfectant, lots of viral outbreaks. Log four, the majority of disinfectants, it's a full on picnic out there. And if you go down to a three or a two, you wouldn't want to use them full stop. They just don't work. And threes and twos are our standard disinfectants we buy through the pharmacies and the supermarkets, which don't come with the TGA pass. Understanding why it's a game changer, the 100% natural thing is critical. No one's had a product that kills the virus in the way we do, and it's all natural, safe and natural. It's a certified organic input. And what that means is if we had, for argument's sake, fruit trays in grocery stores, those trays are, are you know, normally sprayed with some chemical, hopefully as sensitive as we can find at the moment to keep any pathogen outbreak on the, on the fruit. Uh, we can now be sprayed in those types of applications as well. So they keep the fruit in all the shops, supermarkets safe. Same with meat trays and all the things you think about in the food preparation area. They get sprayed. And this is why a certified organic input is a critical factor to hold. Uh, the rating score is a 7.9, as you can see. And no one's got a 7.9 globally that hits that score and it's finally chemical free. The regulatory approval is on the TGA website in terms of the number and the details, but that gives you a little bit more detail. It's a room and surface disinfectant. It doesn't contain chlorides, doesn't contain anything to do with synthetic chemicals, catenary ammonium, chlorine, any of the major ones you see, the sodium hypochlorides, the ammonium chlorides, the peroxides, the didactyl dimethyl ammonium chlorides, nothing at all of that in the super cover. It's purely plant-based, suitable for hospitals, commercial and household use, antibacterial, and it has a fresh fruity smell. It's, it's very, very safe and easy to use. Now, James, just to touch on for your viewers where this disinfected market's going for a minute. As we would expect, it's dramatically shifting from where it used to be. Everybody's disinfecting, everybody's doing it every day where they can. I was talking to a chap that runs one of the largest hospitals in Australia, he's one of the directors, and he said to me, Peter, we disinfect every room every day, every room, every day. Across the globe, this is what's required to ensure we live in a post-COVID safe area. You cannot do that safely with what we had to date. And what Skin Elements has built and manufacturing now, initially for the Australian population first, is super cover, which will give you that comfort of security of the virus and also give you the comfort that it's the safest product to use around people. The market size though, and this is interesting to know, we talk about the big shifts in the mining space and the demand for mining products and interest in lithium and the, the special metals, special products that have been developed for businesses such as electric cars and the like. Let me just say for a second that the biotech space is going to see some very exciting opportunities and Australian manufacturers and developers of product are going to share in those spaces. 
and skin is right there with them. This is our space, $20 billion market today. It'll be over $100 billion expected within the period of this decade. So 2028, they're expecting it to launch and exceed $100 billion. And that's the disinfectant space. This is our space. We are the best and the safest, the strongest and the safest. $100 billion is the market growth. We're sitting in just below $25 billion at the moment. So look, four times 400% growth. Uh, just for the people that do buy shares, we are in the process of getting requited. Re We've had a, uh, uh, a long period of suspension following the program we've been working on. And as previously appreciate that uh, until we got the score, probably everybody, including ASX, felt we weren't going to be there. It seemed a little bit too hard to sort of believe. Uh, for all the doubters, we say, go forward, we're all on safe ground. We carry everybody with us. The good news is we passed. Uh, the exciting period is about to start. And for us, you know, we're a listed company. We obviously do enjoy our shareholders being able to trade their shares, and that is in the process of getting solved at the moment because we're lodging our orders and documentation and ASX subject to receiving all that have said there is no reason why we shouldn't be requoted. So the good news is we're getting positive response now that our product has been certified. The details of the company for investors, investors it's uh, ASX code SKN. Uh, we have been suspended at 10 cents. We've got 433 million shares in issue. We're market capitalizations of just over 40 million. And we were in last year, though we only traded for a short period, 2020, we were the third highest traded stock. Look, I think uh, we, we all get excited when people buy our shares, but I think our days are just starting with our program. So I think it's a time that people just watch and have a look at what we're doing and we're an Australian company if they're Australian investors we're just another opportunity for them on the ASX Peter thank you for that that's extremely insightful very exciting times ahead for the skin elements that's for sure uh, I suppose the big thing that we're obviously all dealing with right now it doesn't matter where you are in the world is of course COVID-19 so we're all having to contend with this at, at present. We're seeing, for example, in Victoria, just exactly what's going on in terms of things that aren't 100%, that people just aren't really dealing with it in the best way. But, you know, there's not going to be any questions about what is contained in the product that Skin Elements has put together. It's going to be questions about the vaccine. That's what we're seeing right now. But we know this is 100% organic. It's 100% natural. It's a testament to what Skin Elements are doing. So, Peter, I really do congratulate you on, on what you've managed to achieve with this product. Yeah, James, look, it's been a big effort from everybody in skin and it's taken a long time. These things don't just happen in five minutes, as you know. Uh, the company set about uh, a decade ago or more now putting together a plan on this and we've spent $35 million in a, a little office facility in Perth, uh, cooped up for a long period of time but some of our products that have come out of this, the, the sunscreens, the natural sunscreens, the natural arthritis, psoriasis, and the eczema products are first rate. So there's gonna be a whole range of products that come out of skin over the course of the next couple of years. But look, it was great to be able to present to your guys and people and your viewers. And uh, anytime, we're always keen to do this for you. Peter, thanks for that, mate. And, and look, I suppose as part of that as well, you mentioned it's the only product supercover that has a log seven classification in the world. That's going to be very exciting. I, I guess one question to ask is, where do you see a big opportunity? Could it be in the form of government contracts, maybe a contract with an airline, for example? Is that something you're looking at? 
Look, we're looking at all those opportunities now. We've, I'm having discussions with people at obviously Optus Stadium here in the West. Uh, we're looking at the hospitals. Hospitals are deep clean every day. They need our product. I mean, what it's showing there is that something quite critical if you picked up. It's the, the fact that a deep clean with a level four or level five disinfectant is not a deep clean. A deep clean with a six is not a deep clean. It's only until you get to a seven, you actually kill all parts of the virus. So what we're having at the moment, we're going globally, we're having deep cleans around the world, world happening every day. And you go into a quarantine hotel, you've had a deep clean, you get the virus. It's there because it's already on the table when you walked in the door. So, so I'm saying that it's really police stations. It's really like Sydney buses, Sydney ferries, Melbourne transport, Melbourne trains. It's anybody that has undergrounds and above ground transportation systems. They need to be, at the moment, they're done at night, deep cleaned, then out for the next day. They can be done during the day while you're on the bus or the, or the train or the ferry. And the other thing too is medical centres across, across Australia, across the globe. People are in there every day, they're deep cleaning the centres one an hour every day, let's get out, clean the place before we get back in with the new patients for the afternoon. The risk is high if you're, if you're cleaning and you're not actually cleaning. And now that our product's on the street and available to be sold, it'll be coming out in two weeks time. It'll be the time to get the product for your house or your office and just have it handy. And if you spray it in the air, you'll get it and you'll be able to just give it a spray and it comes in straight away, gives you the cover. So it's in front of you at the time. But uh, the bottles and everything are going to be a bit unique. So they'll be our size bottle and they'll be in different sizes for a small, for a uh, 80 mil. There's probably going to be 150 mils, 250, 500 and a litre bottle. So it'll be a range. It'll be something sold across all the supermarkets and stores that would be available in pharmacies, but it'll also be online and that will happen in the next two weeks. Absolutely. Now, I'm getting a couple of questions coming here through from uh, Anil and also I think uh, Nick has asked, and th th this is one that's probably a little bit out of your control directly, but you've mentioned there that you've got the TGA approval, you've been in consultation with the ASX and looking to when you can trade again. Do you have a rough time frame of when that will happen? Look, I would hope it's imminent. There's documentation to be lodged to the A6 in the next really seven to 10 days. I think that would be enough to clear all their gates and turn trading back on straight away. There's nothing we have in front of us that sort of precludes that. We've got uh, you know over 3 million cash in the bank. We're sitting here, we're getting production up and running. Uh, we've got another $20 million that's available to us as soon as we come back on the quotation. Um, we've got a growth period going forward and uh, we've got the most competitive product out there and that we can deliver it at the right price. The price of the market will be the price we can, you know, where, they, where these things are priced at, these products, we can do that. And we do it for Australians first, so the big plus is everyone in Australia is safe. Yeah, 100%. I mean, as you mentioned, it's being made here, bottled in Melbourne, in Victoria. So we know where it's coming from. We always know that we produce high quality products and certainly Skin Elements does. Uh, let's hop to another question here as well. One of our attendees has said, would you like to touch upon the value proposition of your suite of products and areas where they hold competitive advantages? Sure, look, I, I think all our products are competitively advantaged is the big one is the natural safe natural organic. So in some ways, the uh, disinfectant says it all. Most powerful, most safe. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, because we've been building up to the disinfectant, we learn our trade with the more simpler pathogens and bacteria. And those products, just like peel a banana, put it on the table, a couple of days it's going black. Organic products don't deal well with what's out in the street in the air. We decided to go for the sunscreen market first. Sunscreens are all chemical, toxic, very, very toxic for 
females in some cases um, and also they just the ingredients that's inside them stay inside the body now for years and Lance is reporting cancer issue studies every week about the problems with synthetic chemical sunscreens so we set about to get the sunscreen safe by the end of the day it's it's a very good product the Saleo Organics is going to be released it was getting out just before COVID and it's got a full range I'll just show you the readers your listeners a few copies of these are the products that are the, are the Saleo brand yep and they they basically are the best in the globe. They're number one in environmental working group. They, um, it's a product that's been rated the best in the world in terms of safety because it's like the disinfectant. Um, it's all natural ingredients. So it's, it's essentially everything in here is safe. So kids, babies particularly, but it's, it's just a white, sunscreen you, you rub it on I can't if you can see that you rub it in and it becomes invisible um i'll do the editing trick <laughs> you need um it's all safe it's it's what sunscreens have never had never had that's why the disinfectant runs in the same family product. you know how to get these products to work but this product water resistant three hours strongest for all the surfing brigades um, we have one of those major surf events around the globe. We went to the Triple Crown a few years back and the whole Quicksilver silver team are using this. It is rated number one in the US. But if you've got a softer version, there's a face. It's mm. more uh, moisturizing. Um, if you like the smell of fragrance of coconut, there's a coconut version. It's, um, there's a whole range that will come out post COVID. Um, and the other side of the table is there's, there's our pork products. Um, they are arthritis, psoriasis, particularly um, designed to get rid of eczema, and they use natural pawpaw cream. And again, they they are um, all sizes, but this one is just one of our many variants. But they, they are basically, if you've got eczema, you've got to, you only have uses of steroids. Steroids for kids growing hormonal issues with the girls and stuff as they grow older. Uh, they play havoc with their body shape when you use steroids. Everything goes back to normal, of course, at the end of the day, but you might have to show yourself up for two years. <laughs> we can do all that and get rid of your face problems straight away, a couple of weeks, and take, no change the body shape, no change to any of the other issues. So in terms of helpfulness, it's safety has always been strong. Um, so in some ways it's good, but it, it doesn't uh, um, solve, it, it solves the problem where you can't use other products. And the other overarching issue here is natural organic ingredients are body strong. The body's dealt is, is, is a natural organic organ uh, unit in itself. Yes. And these, these ingredients are the same. So the body can accommodate them without any effect. We can spray the disinfectant into the skin, as we just do now. And the body loves the disinfectant. And there's no horrible mutations. We like that. Not growing extra tentacles. Exactly. Not going green or, or, or some purple color. Exactly. And that's the benefit. It loves the body, but evaporates or vaporizes a better word the virus instantaneously so if the virus is here i'm just killing it straight away it's like an ice block in the hot water see Peter, that just reminds me of when i'm getting ready for work i just bring out the aftershave bottle bit of bit of it in front of me walk through all the sun i'm smelling a million bucks yes. but this one we can be safe for something which is gonna i would i would imagine generate millions in that sense because brilliant product uh, you've got the pawpaw there as well. I'm sure the, the, the lips are silky smooth at this point. You can tan and you can even eat your sunscreen. So, no, mate, it's know, all happening there at Skin Element. The serious fact is it's been built and designed in Australia. We are at the leading, we are at the front of this market segment. And Australia's not a big place in global terms of population, but they're going to be the first to get access to these products. 
Um, it is difficult to shift products globally at the moment because everyone has been in a difficult period. But I think from the point of view where we are, we do have some of the most highest incident skin cancer rates from melanomas and the like from mm. sun. It is a radiation, ultraviolet radiation. So it's, it's, it's a very, very dangerous issue sitting in the sun. We do need to cover up and we've built the best sunscreen for it. Separate to that, we've now gone on to build the best products for some of these skin diseases, which are highly uh, difficult to deal with up to now. And they also have very, very difficult outcomes over that period while you're getting the treatment. And again, we've been able to actually bring these products to the street and we'll, they'll all be launched. And now to cap it off, we do the Supercover program, which is not only dealt a blow to the virus at a, at a significant rate, it's the, it's the highest globally. They rewrote the level from a six to a seven to accommodate our school. It's all done out of biotech technology in Australia. We work closely with the universities in Australia, so we have a good cut part of links in this sector, but it's really where the government could put a significant amount of capital and create some significant jobs in this space. So I, I'm just saying as a, as a bit of a game changer, Tesla did it for cars. Tesla never made cars. They didn't make one car. They're now the wealthiest car manufacturer in the globe. The number one, they just pipped Toyota. Toyota's been around for 50 years or more. Tesla's been around for 17. And it just shows that these new technologies will change the shape of where the world is in the years to come. And we are very much up at the top level, Australians as a group. So I think there's a lot of capacity for us to get into the space stronger and really get some really good biotech businesses going in this in this various states of Australia. Absolutely, and it's being led by Skin Elements. Peter, thank you so much for your time today. That's been a brilliant insight and it really does look like an exciting future for Skin Elements, especially given that we basically had to change the record books just to accompany one of your products. It's an incredible feat. Now, uh, for our wonderful viewers, if you did happen to have any further questions, you can still address those too, Peter. We won't get to do it right now though, but if you do wanna do that, simply give us an email with the title line being attention to Peter Malone and Skin Elements in relation to the InvestNest webinar and just send that across to info at calcimemedia.com. We'll make sure that gets answered. Peter, thank you once again so much for your time. Yeah, thanks very much, James. Great to be, appreciate the time. Wonderful stuff. All right. Well, that is one of two Peters we have for you today. Let's keep on going now with this InvestNest webinar. I'd like to welcome Mr. Peter Gwynn, the Managing Director of Hallmark Business Sales PTY Limited. Now, Peter Gwynn is a qualified accountant and certified business valuer. He was previously engaged in high-level corporate banking within Australia. Under the stewardship of Peter Gwynn, Hallmark Business Sales has achieved several recognitions, recognition, should I say, to its credit. These include Business Excellence Awards in 2004 and 2006, and the company was included in the list of the top 400 private companies in Queensland. And the company itself has, of course, been operating since 1993, and it's driven with a focus on delivering quality service to its clients, including the transition to retirement with the sale of the business or an acquisition to grow the existing business and wealth. Hallmark Business Sales helps its clients in achieving the best result on their terms while experiencing maximum return on their investment. So without further ado, it's now my great pleasure to welcome Mr. Peter Gwynn to provide some further insights. Peter, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, James, for having me. I'm, I'm pleased to be on air with you. Thank you, James. Uh, there's an excellent presentation from the other Peter, I've got to say, I love that industry. Um, as you said, Hallmark's been around for uh, almost 30 years, having been established in 1993, with over uh, $1 billion worth of successful sales transactions. We simply sell businesses for people and we also value them for them. We have a strong repeat client base, uh, and over 80% of our business is referrals. 
Our market in the SME, our market is the SME sector, which represents the vast majority of businesses in Australia, employing millions of people and are the engine of the economy, responsible for 55% of GDP. The vast majority of these other nine out of ten of businesses in Australia are small businesses, accounting for 33% of GDP and employing 40% of the workforce. The average age of small business owners is 52. As the current generation more than ever are wanting to make their own mark, uh, there is less likelihood of a transfer of a, of a family business to the next generation. I always approach, sorry, I got that wrong. Um, so the SME, spa, SME space is a shining example of Australia's innovation. The, and the age of our clients is closer to 60 rather than the, uh, the average age shown by the statistics. I'm so impressed with the current generation of uh, entrepreneurs with their innovation. You know, in my time, I've seen businesses like the barber industry, barbershop industry close, and uh, more recently, uh, they've opened up everywhere and they're, they're strong and larger than, than ever. Boutique breweries are disrupting the market and creating hundreds of millions of dollars in wealth for their innovative owners. <clears throat> the industry, <clears throat> excuse me, the industry has gone from large conglomerates. Uh, the takeovers to bring the number of breweries down uh, and it opened the door to hundreds of, hundreds of boutique brands. Disruptors like the, like, like the, uh, the Ubers almost obliterated the taxi industry. The upshot in these innovations created billions of dollars of wealth and those that didn't innovate lost as much or more. So how does one sell their business in the SME market? Well, the best place to start, of course, is to, is to appoint an independent person or firm to represent you uh, and make sure their personality, reputation, experience is a fit. Get an explanation of the process with full disclosure on costs, likely hurdles and timeframes. Ask about their licenses uh, to perform the services and what has been their professional indemnity record. By that I mean they, they take out professional indemnity because they're representing the client and what they put out there could be could be uh, challenged. I'm glad to say that in our history we've never had a professional indemnity claim and uh, our professional indemnity gets renewed without, without too many questions being asked at all. Getting the asking price at the outset is so important and this is done um, by looking at the past sales data that Hallmark has and it's the number one supporting evidence in, in disputes before the court. So it will be the best supporting argument to potential buyers for um, what, a, what a business is worth, worth uh, or what it's going to get at sale. Let the consultants do their role and there should be frequent updates provided on the progress of the sale. Uh, what I think is important here is to get someone that is either referred or, is re or really has a good track record. Often when we look to um, get appointed to a, to a role of um, representing a, a business to sell. We often give them the name to the last two successful transactions and ask them to talk to either the buyer or the seller to see what this, their experience was like. And nothing's more uh, annoying than to have a surprise when you're paying the bill. So it's a great example of this in recent times. Uh, I just had my car recently serviced and uh, they always talk to you before well, they spend quite a bit of your money, so uh, uh, we're always uh, very upfront about what we're doing as well. So the selling program, uh, the appointment document should set out clearly the terms and conditions and having a, a quality information memorandum which the seller has approved, it goes a long way in, in getting it done in a, in a, in a shorter period of time. A little tip, if you're selling a business which is showing growth potential, um, and we, we do this from time to time, uh, never use a forecast, always rely on the budget. And the reason for this is forecasts, you can be taken to task on, uh, budgets are just your, your expectations and uh, you know you can't be relied upon. The consultant should have a database of potential purchases and should also identify the target uh, market uh, potential industry buyers, which we do. An acquirer will always be required to sign a confidentiality agreement and, or a non-disclosure uh, document. Your consultant should interview the inquirer before sending any information. That's checking on that document to make sure it's 
the, your information is going to who it's supposed to go to. But your consultants should answer all questions, but they should never assume what the answer is and refer to you, the owner, as needed. Um, I've seen lots of examples of that over the years where people try and answer questions thinking they know something, but it's not co correct. The consultants should negotiate the terms of the offer, including purchase price, due diligence, lease finance requirements, settlement dates, non-compete terms, and any other special conditions. So I'd like to comment further. It's very important that you know the costs of um, most sellers uh, overlook this at the beginning because they're excited about the anticipation of getting out of their business and they gloss over the, the, the cost. So always be uh, clear about what, what you have to uh, to pay and what's expected of you when, when the, the, the job is done. There's two types of fee structures. One's a fee-based structure on success, in other words, uh, more commonly known as a commission. The second is a monthly fee plus a success fee at the end, usually a little more economical. Costs are also known as placement fees, cover the setup costs of the information memorandum and marketing undertaken. For a successful outcome and results, for us, a successful outcome and results is gives us sustainability. You know, we get paid uh, on, on results. What a seller should do during the, the process? Uh, I always tell them, they, they ask this question quite a bit, run the business like it's not for sale. Expect regular updates from your professional consultant. Let them know if you feel they're not keeping you up to date. Remember, it's not a short time frame and can take anywhere from four to 12 months to complete. Patience is a necessary process in this. Be forthcoming and honest about all questions asked of you. Experience shows us that the best sellers are the most cooperative and forthcoming people communicating well with the potential buyers. Uh, the best advice I can offer here is to encourage the owner to continue to innovate, operate as normal, look after the staff and customers during the period. Do not take your eye off the ball, as this can lead to a reducing value of the, in, in the business. I've seen many unhappy staff members comment. To, oh, sorry, I've seen an unhappy staff member comment, comment to a buyer, and that costs the seller a couple of hundred thousand dollars in, in the value of his business. So happy staff. Um, uh, are worth their uh, weight in gold. Uh, a really good example of uh, running the business like it's not for sale is, uh, you know, in fact, the best example was we were representing a medium-sized, heavy, precise engineering business and, and they wanted to sell and they needed two new CNC uh, machining plants that they bought from Japan for a cost of over $600,000 plus installation. Instead of saying, no, we're selling, we're not putting those in, those owners recognised that some machines were out of date and time had to be uh, be replaced. So they replaced the equipment and it turned out to be a strong selling point as we promoted it as the confidence the seller was showing in the business future by upgrading plan. The person who knows the business best is undoubtedly the owner. So a good community owner is always going to help in the value of the sale. So business valuations, how do we st start and, and, and end and get a price. Well, the best tools are the database of thousands of previous business sales that Gormark has completed. The data is unlike the property sales market as there is no central database of business sales, sales um, in, in the past. So these are known as comparable sales. They present a rock solid basis for the valuation. The data is recognized by the courts in disputes before them as the most reliable data and source for establishing valuation. We collect similar data when we provide recommendations on an asking price in a business sale. Prepare a written valuation with supporting documentations. There's a fee for this, uh, and that's agreed at the front end and paid at the beginning of the process. Our value, which just happens to be me, um, is I was qualified or educated in the Australian Property Institute Advanced Professional Certificate in Business Valuations, Lincoln University, but I think most of my um, experience uh, has been in the field and uh, having experienced many sales, I've got a really good feeling for what uh, things are really worth. But I always approach valuations or valuation reviews with one simple rule. Can I support or substantiate my report in a courtroom under examination by other parties, barristers or solicitors? Provide I can see and be comfortable with the courtroom scenario, I sign off. 
Likewise, I can make the case against the Likewise, can I make the case against the other side? In other words, if they ask me for my expert opinion about someone else's valuation, have I got the the data to be able to to, to, to do the um, the opposite? And I, and I, if I have it, I certainly do it. If I can't, I don't accept the role. Data on, as I said before, on, on data on past sales is not available like property is available on the national database. So retaining past sales data is key for providing uh, the most uh, accurate assessment of business values. Brokers generally are happy to share the data with another professional firm to help them with the process. We get information on some sales that we don't have. We share information on sales that we have with other parties. And the final slide I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was what sort of businesses do we like? And uh, I've got to say Peter's previous business, the organic area um, is fascinating for us. We've been looking at um, and, and, and selling health um, and organic businesses for for a long, long time now. And they, they sell extremely well and they're still in, in great demand. That's not an endorsement for him, but uh, certainly I was very impressed with what he's doing there. So we, we like the things he might see in industrial parks like distribution, commercial, health and beauty, um, manufacturing. Um, we still make some things in Australia, surprisingly enough. Online, um, I think there's a great future for that. Um, they're getting stronger and stronger. Recreation, people are getting older. So, um, you know, the things like the motorhome or the caravan or things that you know they, they can spend their money on and they're retired are um, with strong businesses, especially retail. I'm not a fan of retail in shopping centers generally, but there are, ex uh, there are some stories out there that um, really make you sit up and take notice. So we always take a look and uh, we found some specialty retail uh, recently that sold very well. Uh, wholesale, which strong market for us. Um, and our, our, um, our preferred market is between one and 30 million. Um, we've got a couple of big transactions to come to market in the next three to six months. One of them's around that 25 million, one's around the 15 million and our bread and butters, those things um, from really million up in the smaller uh, sector. So that's um, that's my presentation. I just how do I get back to that? Um, with screen sharing, how do I get back to you, Peter? Or to you, James, I should say. We're, uh, we're back right now. So perfect. Okay. Well done. You've uh, not only given a brilliant presentation, you've learned exactly all the tricks of the trade when it comes to the IT side of it too. So I'm very impressed, Peter. But, um, <laughs> thank you for that. You're a good trader, James. <laughs> I'll take it. But um, Peter, thanks so much for your time today. I think maybe the best point you raise is if you are looking to sell, no matter what business you are, you still need to approach things as business as usual. The more desperate a business looks to sell, it, it somewhat becomes counterintuitive. Is that pretty much spot on? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 yeah, don't look desperate because uh, one, it'll either be one of two things, I guess. It'll be they'll be put off entirely from being interested in it, or they'll uh, want to talk to you about the pricing of it and make an offer that's not really acceptable. No, and what we want is an offer that we can't refuse, just minus the horse head in the bed, though. So that's the key thing there. But uh, <laughs> yeah. let's go to a few questions from our audience now. Uh, John has asked. There's uh, fundamental factors that you've previously used for business valuations. They're proving to be insufficient in the present macro environment. How has your business valuation process evolved over the years? Well, because we're handling so many sales on a regular basis, uh, whatever is affected, well, some industries like Jonathan, I think it was said, uh, have been affected by macro um, economic situations and we've seen it in um, in COVID there are businesses that are doing extremely well and uh, holding up and those that just don't survive at all there didn't seem to be any middle ground so uh, we know some industries that haven't been performing too well someone comes to uh, and asks us to value that but we would see because we've even seen the things that we didn't represent but we've seen what they've been doing we can we can form an opinion around yeah, that industry is not traveling so well, so it's not going to be that much in demand. Therefore, you know, it's either not saleable or just take it up to the local auction shop and see what you can get sort of thing, you know? 
Peter, as a follow-up to that, given that we've got this backdrop of a pandemic and there's restrictions left, right and centre, there's obviously the virus floating around. Has that changed the way that you're valuing companies at present? Do, do you have a look at potentially their ability to withstand ongoing restrictions, for example? Is that now a new metric you have as part of your system? Oh, yeah, look, we'll uh, uh, look at how the business is performing when they when they come in to talk to us about selling. And uh, as I said, there, there's a large number of them doing so well. I mean, in fact, we're actually looking at, say, we've got a flat pack, manu- flat pack manufacturer that um, was averaging about $600,000 a year profit. Hmm. With the pandemic, um, it it's got to a million dollars last year. Um, wow. But we're not saying to people that that'll be a million dollars next year when the pandemic's cleaned up with Peter Malone's product. Um, we're saying that that's still a $600,000 uh, thing. So there's some absolute bargains or absolute opportunities out there to buy. And if, and if you get lucky enough to hold it at that, well, happy days, you know. But I, I don't see something that has, has been a, um, uh, such a big event in, in business over the last two years, um, if it gets taken out of the equation, won't change the, um, the the performance of businesses two years after that. Does that follow? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another question here for you as well, Peter, from Sandra. Can you discuss the key operational aspects where Hallmark focuses so that its clients get profitable deals and maximum value for their business? The key operating, what was the, the key operating? Key operational aspects where Hallmark focuses. Okay. You know, yeah. Okay, so we, we typically we want to know what the history has been like um, and, and look at three to five years of, of financial performance. Then we want to know about, do they have security of tenure where they are? So that's a, a key key thing. If they've got no lease or they don't own the freehold, and they look like they might have to change, that's that's a that's a no-no. Um, we want to know the staff have been there and have been there a long time. Uh, we want to know about uh, their strengths, weaknesses, what their opportunities are. So it's, it's not unlike, I guess like, if you want to lend some, someone some money, you, you want to know just about everything about them. If you went to your bank, they ask you a lot of stuff before they give you the money. And I think if you're out buying a business uh, and, or thinking of buying a business, potentially um, be like a person you're going to lend the money to, how do I get it back? Because when you pass that money over to the seller, you're going to want to get it back. Mm-hmm. And you get it back through for a performing business. So what are the things in that business that, that will change when that owner leaves and look buyers are very clever i've got to say there's not much that they don't find out i don't know how they do it but they do it and uh, if you try and hide something you're going to get found out because they're very clever you know what, maybe we they're should not always right but they're very right. clever well See? i think we could use some of those people as contact tracers actually to really get to the bottom of things at the moment that's seemingly <laughs> right up there alan But uh, last one for you, Peter, just before we get some closing remarks from yourself and also Peter Malone. Uh, This one's from Leo Smith. What are the typical costly mistakes committed by business owners when it comes to acquiring or divesting a business? And how does Hallmark help its clients to overcome those mistakes? Uh, I think if it's the wrong person buying the wrong business, that's the biggest mistake. I mean, um, get someone buying completely out of their, their experience, uh, they're likely to have trouble. But then there's the people that buy but are not good people managers. You know, that's another, um, don't buy a business and manage people if you don't know how to do that. Um, you're better off staying where you are and being employed and, and manage them from the, from the managing director's chair or the, not, the, not the owner's chair, but the manager's chair. So picking, in the right industry, having the right skills, um, you know, we, we haven't had too many experiences that I can recall over 30 years where someone's gone in and put it put the money up and weren't, weren't there next in, in 12 months or uh, so yeah, it's, it's just do the just do the research and make sure you you're the person. You, I can almost pick them and second the team. Um, 
this, should these people be buying money? So should we be selling this to them? Um, we don't want the business to fail. And most most owners are proud of what they've created. So they're not mm. going to want the business to fail either. So, you know, I've said to some sellers quite a lot, I don't think this person's suitable. And if I was you, I wouldn't sell it to him. Um, so he'll go and buy something somewhere, but it won't be from us. We want, we want to try and match the person with the business, that he gets a good result, the business continues, and we feel good about it, and we get paid. <laughs> Look, it sounds like a beautiful little synergy there between every element, but I, I think you're spot on. That is what separates Hallmark from other businesses in the same space as you. It's, it's wanting to find the right person for the right role. If they're gonna take over the business, you wanna see it continue to thrive. You're not just looking to make a quick buck it is all about doing that due diligence. So, Peter, thank you so much for your time yeah. today. Just before we wrap up the webinar, I'll get your final thoughts and then also Peter Malone's final thoughts. So, the floor is yours. Well, I really enjoyed uh, talking to you today, Ames, and I really enjoyed Peter Malone's presentation. Um, you know, I think he's onto something there. As I said, not endorsing him, but uh, I really do like that space and it sounds like got a lot of good products. Uh, I think your webinars are great because it makes me do some work and think about my business and have to come out here and talk to um, some people about why uh, they should uh, consider us when, when they're uh, looking to sell or even value or whatever. You know? So yeah, look, I've enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the webinar today. And I think businesses represent a real good and really good uh, lifestyle and investment opportunity for a lot of people and there's a, there's a lot of people wanting to, to exit that, that space over the next few years because of their age you know um, they're, they're 60 plus they've made their money they've got a great business and they just need a, a new uh, a, a new person there and you, you've got some wonderful people that they're looking to buy too um, you know, people that are in their 40s that uh, have been in corporate life that got good training and and they, they're the right people they'll, they'll make a success of it so thank you for the opportunity not a problem whatsoever and, and final thing just before we move on peter malone if we want to get some more information on what hallmark's doing what's the website where can we find you on the socials uh it's www.hallmarkbusiness.com.au we've got an instagram page we've got a facebook page um not, I don't do that, by the way. You'd be probably worked that out already, James. But we've got a social media person. No, I think so, you're yeah, tech and uh, go to the website. What's that? Sorry. I think you're pretty tech savvy. I reckon you can do that as well. <laughs> See, we're we're one of the leaders in. We, we were the first to actually go to computerization in 2000. Before that, this industry was had phones on the desk and, that, and one computer in an office of 20 people. You know. These days, everything's yeah. done electronically. Absolutely. Well, Peter Gwynn, thank you so much for your time today. Let's now just wrap things up with Peter Malone. Now, we've uh, we've been talking a little bit about Instagram websites for uh, Peter Gwynn there. I'm assuming with Skin Elements, the Instagram is full of all those beautiful pawpaw products, the, uh, the sun cream that just immediately envisages into the skin it disappears in an instant is it looking pretty uh chockers in that space there peter malone uh yes can you hear me yeah i thought i've got you there mate oh, great stuff yeah look like a good uh, just interesting conversation that peter was having as well I was just following that it's a very good business that peter's been sort of walking through um but coming back to the for social media yes we are uh, uh, as you probably understand, we're putting a whole new social media package together. I've got 10 social media people globally at the moment working with me. I've got a, a party in Georgia in the US. There's another person up in Singapore, one in Romania, a couple in uh, one at Falls in Victoria. She's having a bit of time off and working from a computer off at Falls and uh, having a bit of ski during the day. Uh, but the bottom line is it's, it's all about getting the message out for us and social media is it's a global product of course so we've got to get the global message out and uh, we'll have one of these engineered landing pages which goes chasing the customers uh, when they look for disinfectant 
And of course, at the end of the day, you've got to have the capacity to do that. And the site's got to be particularly designed and put together in a way that's different to what's normally done. So it's a very, very different package, but it's a very involved package. And uh, also the graphics and the, we're doing our own videos and the like. So all that's sort of coming together. So in the, in the end of the day, you've got to have an offering. And now offering is to a large extent, we can't be in everywhere in the globe. So you log on and look for and search for disinfectant, safe, natural, high powered. All those key words should come up with busy super cover. Yep, all about search engine optimization. Speaking of which, what is the website? Where can we find more details? Uh, look, Skin Elements Limited, www.skinelementslimited.com. And uh, that will be operational under one landing page with super cover as well, but I, I haven't got that live yet. That will go live, I think, in about uh, within two to three weeks. And that's about the time when the production starts to come out of Melbourne ready for deliveries. So we didn't want to have any pre-orders uh, necessarily banking up. We were trying to get it all bring coming together. So it'll all be in about two to three weeks time. Wonderful stuff. Now, let's just wrap things up here in a nice little package. Your final thoughts for today and also for uh, Skin Elements moving forward, Peter. Well, look, I think today it's, as Peter as well says, we. We changed the way we did business. Historically, things have changed. Uh, it's a different business setup. We've had the opportunity to try working from home and working from the office concurrently. Um, I think the overarching decision is working from the office is the way to go in terms of uh, uh, a break from your normal life cycle. Living in your, in your house all day is a bit terrifying at some points. You're seeing the same wall and the same desk all day uh, and there's no one to talk to of course in an easy formal sense in informal sense when you're walking around the house uh, but I think that's going to change because I think our product makes it safe to come to work you can now feel that you've got any office anywhere and you've got your own you've got your own safety product in your hands so I think that's my take on the world uh, back to business in 2022 I think travel everything will start in the early 2022 period, January, February, maybe a bit earlier in December for, I hear flights in Australia starting to come back in December. So all these things, I mean, Europe's back on, as if it hasn't missed a beat. US and North America's back as if it hasn't missed a beat, Asia's traveling. So I think we, we were a little cocoon down here in the island. Um, I think in busy super cover, we'll probably go to a little way further to make the political supremos confident that uh, they can pull people out of out of lockdowns and I think you've seen in Victoria now and also New South Wales of course you can't keep everyone locked up because you get people walking down the streets going crazy and I think that's not good for anybody so I think it's probably timely that our product came around and we can get it out there but I think we we won't be the first and, and only will be more to come and that's good news I mean COVID will generate businesses that can do things differently than we're doing say 12 to 24 months ago or a decade ago and look, I think that's a wonderful point for both of you there as well. I mean, we are looking to get back to normal in 2022. Hopefully we can even do it this year. And once we do, we'll have your product to help us do exactly that. And there'll be plenty of businesses looking to surge up that are going to need a new valuation. So I want to thank both of you, Peter Malone and Peter Gwynn, so much for joining us today and sharing your insights. Yeah, great thank stuff. Thanks, Jeff. Well, ladies and gents, I hope you found that a very informative session. It was fantastic to talk to our two Peters there. and. Peter Perfect, you might even say. There was some great stuff that we learned from both of our esteemed guests. And if you do want to delve further into equity, market updates, or anything of the like that we're doing here at Kaukai and Media, and of course, of our associated clients today, we've mentioned their websites, but you can also check out what we're doing at www.kaukai.com. And of course, we do have the live stream each day with Kaukai TV, eight hours for you. So we're really getting out there now. Please stay tuned with Calcone for the upcoming Invest Nest webinar series. We do host them quite frequently. Hopefully you'll join us for the next one as well. Of course, we are very active on our social media platforms, much like both of our Peters there. So stay connected to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and on YouTube. And of course, if you didn't have one of your questions answered today, pretty simple stuff. Just send an email across to info at calcinemedia.com. 
and address whether it's Peter Malone or Peter Gwynn that you'd like that answered by. And uh, make sure that you've also put in the Invest Nest webinar in the title. That brings us to an end for this webinar series. Hope you've enjoyed today. And of course, make sure to stay in touch with us, get across to those socials. And if you've got any final questions, it's info at Calcone Media. Have a fantastic day.